I was first informed by uh, one of the staff members on um, approximately July the 3rd that they had just learned there was a possibility of the facility closing. The next day I was at the Farm Family Stampede Awards and our MLA Ian Donovan came up and asked me if I was okay with the whole closure down at Little Bow, to which I just about fell off my chair and then I said, heck no, I won't go. And it wasn't until the week, the following week, that I got a phone call from Alberta Health informing me that the place was closing. And I got a formal letter on July the 18th and my dad was moved this morning. As the mayor of Carmengate, I am deeply concerned for the future of my community. This is the biggest and one of the only employers in our community, and I'm afraid that this closure is just the result, or is just the beginning of yet another rural ghost town mm -hmm. in southern Alberta. The care my dad's received at Little Bow is just second to none. It's absolutely exceptional. He's had not just nursing care and, and regular everyday stuff, but he's actually ha he has love, care, com compassion. The staff and the volunteers really do care for each and every person over there. And I also volunteer, so I, at the same token, I'm also very fond of the people there as well. And this whole thing, nobody's thinking about the effects that it's going to take. I wonder, is the government going to be responsible if my dad goes down the tubes or passes away? Or what about these other residents? Because most of them are pretty frail. My grandma was moved in seven and a half months ago. Um, it was a very quick, last minute transition because their dementia had got worse. And the staff there, they understand how hard it is for dementia and Alzheimer's patients to adapt and they just they're people that she knew all her life I guess that makes a big difference she reconnected with ones that she never knew you know were even still around and they took her under her, the wing and when she cried they held her they, they called her her pet nickname they call her Aggie they give her cookies and they give her treats and tuck her in at night there was a lot of tears the first few months. She kept wondering what she did wrong to have to move, and she kept asking us if we could take her home again. So it was very, uh, probably was harder in retrospect on the family than it really was on her because she went, you know, the dementia means you don't remember it all. And now that we've got to the place where she's happy, I just can't imagine in her 99th year expecting her to pull up and move again and go through it all one more time. It just scares the heck out of me because I think, I think that might kill her. Well, my, my dad's 81 and he has dementia and other health problems. Uh, he immigrated to, um, we immigrated here in 1959 from Denmark. And um, we're his only family aside from some grandchildren and great-grandchildren and he worked hard all his life he certainly wouldn't be very happy if he knew all this was going on that's for sure and being told if you don't take a home and stuff they they can be uh, shipped back to me what can I do I can't my dad can't even walk he cannot go to the washroom he can't feed himself he can't do anything I can't take care of him in that state now because I did for a year and a half or so before he came to the facility. Where were they three and a half, four years ago when I was desperate? I'm not desperate today. I don't want them to move. They just pulled the carpet out and were all sneaky and didn't even think that I deserve a reason why. And it's not because of the building. That's just a load of BS. It's not an institution. It's a home. The people that are there are not caregivers. They're family. And for Minister Horn and Alberta Health Services to take a look at a building that was, yes, built in 1958, but upgraded in 88 and 89 with a new addition in the 90s. The same building that passed an inspection, full facility inspection in March of this year. Flying colors, lowest percent was 92. When I was in school, a 92 was an A+. 
I'm, I'm just baffled what changed between March and now, and a friend of mine pointed out all that changed was an election. All my adult life, I've been a strong supporter of the PC government. Today I'm a little bit ashamed to say that because the people that I thought heard me, turns out they're not accessible, they're not available, nobody's available for comment, or those who were suddenly can't talk to me anymore. Um, as also, I was very proud to be an employee. For those of you who don't know, I've worked at the Little Boat Continuing Care Center for 17 years. I was a proud Alberta Health Services employee. I was proud to take care of the patients that they left to my care. I was proud to work side by side with my coworkers. Today I'm not so proud because I think it's awful the way that they're treating people. I think, I think they need to be accountable and they need to hear us. They might not answer their phones, they might not answer their emails, but by golly, we're gonna make them listen today. that actually everybody in Alberta should really look at this as a wake-up call. If it happens here, it can happen anywhere. We don't know if and when our loved ones are is ever going to need long-term care. And believe me when I say it, if they do, this is the care you want. You don't want them being shoved in a corner just being a number, like a nobody. They're people.